What happens to those who die? Do they live on as lost spirits yearning for closure, or is there a sudden darkness erasing all that they were? This may explain why we may fear the daunting prospect that there may or may not be an afterlife. England, for example, is known as the most haunted country in the world, with occurrences dating back over a millennium. This has sparked conflicting groups of people into the debate of their existence. But why are people so interested? The idea of ghosts and spirits have haunted us for years, backed up by countless reports across the globe. But is it just speculation? Or is it just the misconception of inimaginative minds? Or do the dead truly walk among us? Now there has been a range of ghostly phenomenon in Oxford Castle. For example, there's been ghostly footsteps heard along the prison wing corridor, and also a figure seen around the prison mound. Most famously was Mary Blandy, a murderer executed in 1752, and it was seen by people that she's meant to haunt the place where she was hanged. We're here to interview Andy Middleton, a tour guide around the castle, to explain the strange occurrences happening within the walls of the castle. I believe life is just part of the journey, and the journey continues after we're dead, and people are absolutely fascinating and want, fascinated and want to know what happens next. I firmly believe there is something. We come back in some other way, shape or form after we've died. When I was down in the crypt once, I did have a hand tuck me on the shoulder. And I also believe I saw a dark cloak, the tail end of a dark cloak, disappearing out of the crypt during a tour. Another gentleman stood by me, also swore he saw the same thing, so it wasn't just me. Well, there's 1,000 years of history on this site, good and bad, murder, mystery and mayhem. And we've hanged and beheaded loads of people here over the years. Science leads is what some people believe, with most skeptics coming to consensus that in fact you need factual solid evidence to believe in the afterlife. I'm currently approaching the atmospheric oceanic planetary physics building in Oxford University to talk to a physics researcher called Colin Wilson who's going to explain how ghosts may simply be a theory and not a fact. Well, in terms of what's actually out there, what's verifiable with, you know, scientific experiment and so on, um, our, our life is, uh, you know, life is respiration, consciousness, so our thoughts stop when all electrical activity in the brain ceases. There are no longer neurons firing in your brain, then, then that life is no more. Um, so from that point of view, I would find it very difficult to, to lend any sort of physical credence to the afterlife. But of course, uh, there are many emotionally appealing reasons to believe in an afterlife. You know, you've known someone for a long time and you still remember them. They still exist in your, in your uh, mind. So uh, it is perhaps unnatural to believe that they stop existing simply because they've died. Um, but having, so that means their memory stays alive. But I, I think to take it one step further to say that they still exist in the real world as a spirit, I think is, is one step too far. Now our spiritual discovery starts at the North Oxford Christian Church, a place where its purpose is to provide a warm and welcoming environment to people who search for evidence for life after death, but also to provide comfort and reassurance for those who have lost their loved ones. Spiritualism is a big thing. To me, it's a sort of a way of life. I walk believing that there's an higher presence. Um, whether you call it God, whether you call it Goddess, how do you put a name to an intelligent energy? I don't know, but I know it's there, I know it's real, and I know I can use it. I can remember going to bed and saying to mum, worried about dad tonight. Oh, he's all right, he's... I'm really worried about Dad tonight. Oh, for goodness sake, he'll be fine. And about the third or fourth time I said it, Mum had a worry in her voice. And she said, oh, for God's sake, shut up, you're worrying me now. And I just thought for a minute, and I said, oh, don't worry about her, Dad. I said, he's absolutely fine. I can see him coming in from work. The sun's shining, and he's walking along the farm, and he's smiling. He's absolutely fine, Mum, don't worry. But I think it might be his brother, <laughs> which probably wasn't a lot of con consolation. 
half past seven in the morning, we was awakened with um, knocking on the door, and it was my um, other uncle to say that Dad's brother had died in the night. So, but it was very natural to me. It was, um, it was just one of those things that you know. This isn't a scientific thing, it's, it's a natural thing, and science is catching up and proving an awful lot that we've always said and done. Um, but we can't prove scientifically. And because we're working with spirit, if I start giving you a reading, till I start, I don't know what's gonna come through because it's not me, it's whatever spirit brings through. So, we never make promises. We never promise anything we can't keep. So there you go, everyone. You've seen the views on such a controversial subject matter between the believers and the skeptics. So it's up to you. Do you believe in life after death?